The Voice Pro to me is more than just a tool. It's a way to enhance my interventions through amplification. It increases a child's awareness of their own voice as well as the input that I'm giving. Um, as a speech pathologist, I work with many children that have auditory processing weaknesses. And the Voice Pro is a way that I can give that acoustical information, those sound signals to them in an enhanced manner so that they're getting it correctly the first time. I'm not having to repeat myself as often, so um, it's a great strategy for helping them compensate, but I also know that I'm providing therapeutic intervention. I'm helping retrain those pathways, those auditory pathways to respond. Um, it's also a great language tool. I can utilize it while I'm doing play therapy. And um, it's not just technology, it's a way to enhance what's being said, to increase their attention to the task, um, to help engage them. Um, if you're doing speech language interventions and you're not moving, you're sitting at a desk, or you're just focusing on a listening task, then you're not replicating real life. And so the goal is to get that child or that adult um, to be able to multitask, to be able to do the things that the motor systems are required to do in a classroom or work setting. Um, neurons that fire together wire together, so we're working on those pathways rewiring efficiently and effectively. And then I'm adding in movement and other challenges to help replicate a natural setting. Um, we're not, when we're working in school or in a work setting, we're not just sitting and listening. We're having to maintain good posture, we're having to move, we're having to take in information visually and put it down on paper. We're using those motor skills to write information down. Um, I utilize the Voice Pro for that as well. Adding in that movement with the built-in microphone that the Voice Pro has, it allows for movement. The longer cord allows us to move around the room. And I can replicate natural challenges that a child and even an adult would have in their day-to-day -day setting. And then through doing that, when they return to that functional setting, they have greater success. When I'm adding it in, I always am doing speech language activities that I would typically do. And it is enhancing that intervention. So I utilize my traditional techniques. Um, I use the materials that I've always used. It does have a lot of nice pre-recorded options. So I take the script from that and use those um, that stimuli that's available on that and customize that to fit that client's need. And then I add in movement to increase the complexity or to um, provide good challenges and to work on that whole brain body function. Um, on that note, I had a client once that um, I was doing auditory processing, auditory training with that child, and we were working on auditory speaker ground tasks, filtered words, dichotic listening. I would have discharged that child had I not been adding in movement and other strategies beyond just my traditional techniques. Um, when I added in the movement and added in some more complex patterns that required a lot of focus and attention, um, adding that movement piece dropped the percentages to 30% on all areas except dichotic listening, and it dropped that to 10%. So I think it's key to do all of our traditional practices, but add in the movement and in the auditory enhancements and really work from that foundational level up.